Hi, so this video demo is a continuation of our last video demo where we implemented an override control scheme. So the issue that we face is we had this reactor and we were trying to control both our outlet concentration, which was a function of our inlet flow, and we were also trying to control our level, which is also a function of inlet flow. And in this particular example, the only manipulated variable we have available to us is the flow. So the control scheme that we attempted to set up was to control concentration using flow rate and we would use our level controller as an override. So if the level got so high that it threatened to overflow the tank, then this level controller would kick in and would reduce the flow rate and we would no longer be in concentration control. So practically we ran into some issues in our Simulink model. So we set up this control scheme. We have our two different controllers that are each tuned to achieve a set point. So the level controller tries to achieve a level set point and the concentration controller tries to achieve a concentration set point. Those each spit out a recommended flow and then we pick which of those signals we're going to use by using this minimum block which just takes those two signals, in this case 6.3 and 176, it picks the lower of the two and implements that. The issue that we ran into was that, so initially we're controlling concentration. When we make a set point change in our concentration from 4 to 6, this concentration controller starts calling for more and more control, and it takes quite a while, but eventually our level controller uh, overrides it and kicks in and tries to bring down the flow and bring down the level. So the issue that we ran into was that this concentration controller experienced reset windup, where it's well below its set point on level and it takes a long time for that controller to unwind. In other words, we had to take all the integrated error and we had to subtract all that integrated error before this controller could actually reach its set point. So in practice you can see this is a big problem because if our tank overflowed at 10 meters we're going way over that level until before the controller actually starts to have a positive effect on our system. So the way that we can handle this is similar to the way we handled control valve saturation. Remember in a previous ex demonstration that when our control valve reached 100%, that flow controller could no longer do anything. It could no longer reach its set point. So we introduced in our controller, we went to, to this option and we, um, we limited our output and then we chose an anti-windup method of clamping. So that anti-windup method basically stopped the integral part of the controller from integrating so that we wouldn't get those large errors building up. So in this case, the way we're going to handle this is we're going to use a similar method, but we're going to go to our controller and we're going to pick an option on external reset. So what external reset does is it allows your controller to receive an external signal and that external signal is what will prevent it from integrating. So we have several options here we can stop our integrator from integrating when there's an external signal that's rising or falling or either rising or falling or at some level. So we want to pick this level. So basically what this means is that when this external signal is non-zero our PI controller will stop integrating. So when I select level here you can see this gives me another port here so another place where I can pass a signal through. So I'm going to skip ahead. I've taken several intermediary steps um, before and I've created a new block here. So you can see I've replaced our this minimum block, the built-in Simulink function, with a custom function of my own. So that's just a MATLAB function. I've called it LVS or Low Value Selector. And I've titled this Smart Low Value Selector because we want to get a little bit more information from our Low Value Selector. So the information that I want is I want to know when my level controller is in control or when my concentration controller is in control. So I've set up this logic block to not only pick the lower of these two values, so it'll pick the, the lower of the level um, controller's flow recommendation or the concentration controller's flow recommendation, it picks the lower of the two and still um, sends that information to our reactor. I mean, and to our actual valve. The external information that this is giving us, and I've built this into the logic myself, is when the level controller is not in control, I want this level variable to send a non-zero signal back to my PID loop. So when the level controller is not in control, 
I'm going to stop my PI controller from integrating by sending it a non-zero signal, and the same thing for the concentration controller. When my concentration controller is not in control, I'm going to send it this external signal that's going to stop this from integrating, which will have this um, anti-windup method built into it. So I'm going to go into this logic block, and again, remember this is all custom code that I have developed, and frequently you find this in, in control systems when there are abnormal circumstances that have happened, and you don't want to cost your plant a million dollars by having some event like a reactor overflowing. People have taken a lot of precautions to make sure these systems are incredibly robust, and they're typically when you see a control system, you don't just have some simple PID controllers. You have a, a ton of custom logic built in to keep the plant operating under any set of circumstances. This can be safety precautions or finan preventing financial losses. So let me walk you through this function. So my outputs to the function are this variable called level, which is an indication of whether you're in level control or not. This out, which is just picking the lower of the two flow control signals. And this const variable, which is telling me when my concentration controller is in control or when it's not. My inputs are just my level flow control signal and my concentration flow control signal. So I just have a simple if statement, so if if it should be in level control, meaning my level flow signal is lower than my concentration flow signal, I want to set this level variable equal to zero, and I want to set this concentration variable equal to one, and I want to pick this uh, L underscore flow, my level flow control signal, to be what I actually send to my valve. So if you go back, so when we're in level control, this level variable is zero and the concentration variable is one. And what that does to our overall system is, when we're in the level control, I want to send a zero value to this controller, which means it will keep integrating and the controller will continue operating as normal. The concentration controller, which would be the one that's not in control, it's, I'm going to send it a signal of one, so I'm going to send it this non-zero value, which tells this concentration controller to stop integrating. So it's not in control, so we don't, so there's no use in having this integral um, error build up over time. So in the other circumstances, so when we're when concentration flow is less than our level controller's flow, then we send a 1 to our level flow controller and we send a 0 to our concentration controller and the low value that we pick is our flow signal from the concentration controller. So first I'm going to go back and remind you of our results here. So we had this terrible response to our level. First our tank totally overflows before the level controller actually does anything to, to kick on and our concentration um, it takes a really long time for this concentration to come back down so it takes a long time for our control system to unwind but if I come in here and run this file it takes a bit longer because Simulink is using a variable step solver so when it sees that you're making sharp changes it takes smaller steps so we're taking smaller steps, so you see our simulation um, doesn't solve quite as fast, but this is still pretty reasonable. If I go in and look at my um, product concentration, you can see at time t equals 120 minutes, we make this step change. So we're trying to go from 4 to 6, and this basically means that um, we, if we wanted enough flow to actually reach a concentration of 6, we can't actually achieve that without flowing, overflowing our tank, so, the, so we no longer achieve our set point on the concentration controller. The level controller, on the other hand, so we have a set point of 8. Remember, our overflow limit is 10, so we want to make sure that we don't reach that overflow limit. So you can see our level um, doesn't really do anything until it kicks on. So at time t equals 120 minutes, when we make the step change on concentration, then our level controller kicks on, and the level controller keeps us at a level of 8 meters. So you see this quite common, you see a combination of PID controllers and then smarter logic that tell your system how to handle certain circumstances and it's very important to try and make them synergistic to try and use the benefits of a PID controller with the benefits of some custom logic that can handle some of these adverse circumstances.